And I remember the first time a sponsor, it wasn't the sponsor, it was a photographer that they sent down to shoot me. He was like, we can't shoot here. Huh. And I was like kind of confused. And I was like, yeah, what do you what? mean? That's wild. And he's like, it's too dirty. He's like, they're never going to go for this. And I'm like, I bro, I'm like wild. a couple blocks from my house. This is my neighborhood. Now I look and every shoot now is it's in where I, this happened in like two years. Two and there's years. a whole thing called urban gravel now yeah, that people tell me and I'm like oh, no. you mean just me riding just out to my house yeah, like, exactly. that's, that's I'm just urban, going home urban no big deal like, they always crazy. gotta throw the urban yeah. in there and Wagwan, everybody. I am Donovan. I'm Constanza Eliana. Yes, and welcome to Stranger Fruit. We are out here again in these L.A. streets. We sure are. We have some special guests here. We're going to get right into it. Yeah. But first, before that, Eliana. Yes. We have some special, special guests in we here. We really today. do. I'm going to intro. I'm going to intro. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be messy. <laughs> But first, uh, we have Mark <laughs> Alford, who is a community builder, marketer, former elite cyclist, and co-host of the From the Gun podcast, a black and brown podcast centered around cycling. It's amazing. I'm just like, yo, I need to listen to this immediately. And then we have Andrew Jackson, who is a former professional pro BMX rider turned director cinematographer who is now making a name for himself as a gravel athlete. I know y'all are like... What the fuck is what a gravel, is a athlete? gravel <laughs> athlete? And yeah. we are going to get into it first. But Ileana, Ooh. to your right is Mark. <laughs> yes. Tell the people who Mark is. Mark, everybody, is my husband. We have <laughs> my husband here on the show today. So Mark and I have been together for 11 years. Yo. A really long time. We have been married Insert for Insert hand claps year. here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have been married for about a year or so, I think. Some change. Yes. Um, <laughs> Don't roast me in the comments. Forget. I always forget. Taking that long. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a whole story. Um, so I have witnessed your journey mm. in cycling um, since the moment we met each other. He was a cyclist. I had never dated a cyclist. I dated plenty of athletes, but oh, okay. never a cyclist. So it was brand new to me. The first, I think the first time I went to watch you race, I was like an anxiety ball. Like, oh my God, people are crashing around me. Like, what is happening? And I'm just witnessing like a loop. <laughs> this sounds <laughs> just, like, terrifying. Cyclists, <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, what is happening? This is different. This is very different. But you really educated me on the sport. Um, and I'm really excited to have the conversation today with yeah. you and Andrew. Andrew mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the cycling sport is very white dominated. It is also what I didn't realize, very expensive. Yes. Which is probably why it's white dominated, right? Very it's, much. When so. it's expensive sport, it's really, really hard for people of color to get so in. So difficult. Yeah. Um, I still make fun of the prices of bikes. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> insane. Even my bike, I think, is expensive. How much was your bike? Uh, like three hundred bucks. That's not yeah. expensive. And but you well, know, growing for up bike, for, for a bike, a bike yeah. but growing up, you know, fifty dollars for a bike was all you could afford, right? Mm -hmm. So he has taught me that there are there is a spectrum of pricing in bicycles <laughs> <laughs> and all, it can go all the way up to what is the most expensive bike like uh, like 18, 20 grand. Yeah, I was gonna Woo! say 15, 20 grand. Yeah, 15, 20 grand. Park itself. No, no, you got to it. Like, <laughs> you're the engine. You got to. Yeah, it's you know. not made out of gold either. It's no. like, it's. Uh, you, can get, you can get gold on there. You can. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So that was an education to me. I was like, oh my God, I could never imagine paying $20,000 for a bike. But there, 
there's, you know, there's levels to it. So I'm excited. Thank y'all for being here. Yes. Thank you. Yes. yes. So can I ask the first yes, question? Go How ahead. the hell did you get into cycling? <laughs> like I'm sure that's what everybody's wondering. How yeah, did you get into it? I guess I could start. Yeah, go. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was a high school athlete. Did a, every you know American sport. You know, uh, track, basketball, baseball, football, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then uh, you know I was like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not good enough to do any collegiate sports or whatever. So I'm just gonna you know pick up a bike um <laughs> and i was like you know what i started to get like you know all that big muscle started to turn into you know uh you know little little love handles <laughs> i was like oh man i gotta get a hobby or something to stay active while okay I'm, while i'm you know i'm in school so I, I picked up a bike and it was like this little single speed um little you know uh it wasn't Quite a track it wasn't bike, a twenty thousand dollar bike. No, no, no. It okay. was it was cheap. It was like Craigslist. I think when Craigslist was like still super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's yeah. still super creepy. Yeah, it's still super creepy. Yeah. Uh but no, yeah. It was and I started cycling in um Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, you know, I was riding one day and um I ran into this guy named Sean Wolf. Um he actually uh owns and runs uh, two bike shops in Brooklyn. Um, mm. soon to be uh, another bike shop here in LA. Dope. And he actually just introduced me into this whole world of cycling. Um, and for there, I got my first bike sponsorship and my first bike because I couldn't afford it. And that's the, the <laughs> easiest way to uh, get a bike that nice yeah. is to be really good at, you know. So is that how you got your sponsorship? That's how I got you were my just sponsorship. a badass and as a result. Yeah, the, well, and okay. also relationships too. Okay. Like, um, and then they also saw, you know, what I was trying to do and what I was trying to accomplish. And like, I want to be behind that. So what do you need for us to support you? And that's kind of how it, it went. And then they saw the potential and talent um, that mm -hmm. I kind of didn't see, but I was like, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. And uh, they were like, no, we're gonna support you. So that's how I, I got it. Because I was gonna say like, what was it about cycling specifically that attracted you? Like what was uh, it? It's an adrenaline rush Yeah. Mm. Like if we do any, um, and you could speak to this too, even like, even BMX, honestly. Because yeah, BMX do, like, is stairs stairs super intense. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like At least from what I understand, BMX yeah. is like intense. Man, well, the I need read, for speed. Yeah. I did uh, street riding, if uh -huh. you know what that is. It's yeah. Like, Jumping down handrails and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. It's basically like being a criminal. Because that's <laughs> what it is. Criminal. For real, like you're like the security yeah. guards kick you out and they're like, you're just, yep. doing, they're, we're just doing our job and we're like, we are. Too no, it's right. true. I remember <laughs> them like kind of like labeling those guys, even the skateboarders, but kind of like as a yeah. like troublemaker. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. that's yeah. how it is. Like you want to be in like the hardest spot to get to, which is usually like you got to jump a fence. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Is that a general? Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Just a no, I don't know for sure. I think so. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but no, I mean, and you're the, also very competitive, I'm and you kind of need to be. And I needed to an be, outlet to uh -huh. be competitive. Yeah, that's and uh, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? And I realized, um, you know, you in cycling, you start out as a um, citizen slash a cat five is like the beginner cyclist. Okay. And I found out like the first race, they immediately got me out of cat fives and put me <laughs> on fours. <laughs> they were like this guy, and you're so, like, oh my god, okay, this um, is intense. You know, and you know, you go from a, f a five to a four. Did to you a three win your first two. race? I won the first race. Yeah, uh, I lapped the field. Oh, they were mad then. They were mad. Yeah. mad. Yeah. And this is your first race. They were like, first "This race. is not his first race." I was like, "This is yeah. 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 <laughs> in the witchcraft is going Just on here." Talented. So yeah. we're from like uh, so you five, four, three, two, and one, and then at a cat one, you're essentially a professional level. That's like the peak of the peak. Uh, ish. ish. So okay. at, at a cat one, you you're eligible to, uh, and not just eligible. You can actually you can land a contract cat two if you want, but um, but you can get a pro contract at cat one and race pro and race with the pro mm -hmm. uh, athletes at that point. And it goes to like domestic, professional, pro continental. And then Pro Tour is like the tip, like those one okay. the people you see in like Tour de France stuff like that. It's the NBA. Yeah. Is the NBA? Are yeah. there a lot of Are there a lot of black folks or brown folks Africans by the time? now? Oh. But not. I mean, and not, not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah, yeah, there's like three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, okay. but no, no, not really. When we like when I started, I mean, there was a French guy on Team Europe car, um, and I think the cyclists will probably know what I'm talking about. But uh, <laughs> but that's it. There was one guy. Um, and then you saw like this uh, African guy named Daniel um in a super long name. Uh, <laughs> and then that was the guy I saw on Quebec when they did this foundation uh, team uh, for their main sponsor. Uh, but not a whole lot. You know? mm -hmm. And then I ran into the pro, uh, U.S. pro athletes, the American ones, uh, like Rasan Bahadi. 
and Justin Williams and Corey Williams. Okay. Um, and that's when I was like, I want to meet these guys because this was like back in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I got to meet them. Uh, so I drove up to a race in uh, Wisconsin and uh, just super white, obviously. <laughs> uh, Milwaukee, I'm not Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, but it's called the Tour of America's Dairyland. And that's actually when I <laughs> oh, met those. Oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. Dairyland. <laughs> yeah, Dairyland. Totally. White land. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, Dante did that one. Yeah. Um, we're, Dante is one of our friends that, uh, Dante is one of our friends that also races pro. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so I went up there and finally got to meet slash race against them. Mm -hmm. and, and these are all, black cycles. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was like, oh my God, you know, somebody, you know, and, and I'm light skinned. Uh, and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, colorism, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Uh, but in uh, in Indiana, I was like the blackest thing on the race course. So, so yeah. it was very interesting. It was very, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the one thing that I noticed immediately. Yeah. Like in my first one. race, I was like, it's a lot of Actually, white not even brown men. Folk, not even brown folk was there. Yeah, no. that I saw, I didn't see any diversity yeah. at all. It was he wild. was probably was the Indiana. only black racer yeah. at the at that particular one. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, let and me sit actually, back and see how this goes. You almost you almost uh you almost were with me through my whole entire cycling experience. I think when almost, I almost. Uh, when I met you, I was already racing at a pretty high level. Yeah. Mm. Um because I did go from a five to two in a season and then it took me a minute to to get to that one. Mm. Um but there was a lot of like I mean that also came with a lot of like you know, mixed words and like comments while racing mm -hmm. and side eyes and all types of uh, crazy things I had to run into. Um, even like trying to get uh, a Cat One license was it was rough. Like hmm. it was like, why aren't you improving me? And blah blah blah. It's all this other stuff. So, right. so did well. you ever like and, and and for you too, Andrew, if you want to jump in? But did you ever get to a point, especially as you were pursuing being pro, where you felt like? Yo, I can't do this. There's like a lot of racism. oh yeah, for sure. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I mean, there's times where I was like, I gotta work so I can eat. Yeah. And pay for school and you know all, all this other stuff. And it's like I can't even get to a race at a weekend because I can't call off work or mm -hmm. you know. And you got to race in order to get your your name out there or get results or whatever have you. Right. So it was it was a struggle. Right. Um, but that's how I got into cycling to answer your question. So mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you pass it yeah. on. So air. you're just now getting into. Yeah. gravel cycling which is that's what i race i yeah. ride everything like yeah. road yeah. bikes, gravel everything so what's that been like for you switching over from like a pro bmx type oh thing my god it's to so something different, different. yeah, what, yeah. Might, and what is it yeah, like, yeah. actually we might have to we might you might you might have yeah. to like describe Explain BMX and what it is that you're doing yeah uh so gravel racing is like super long races it's like over a hundred miles on your bike. Oh my god! Oh my god. I'm, I'm <laughs> dead. Yeah, I cannot. That's great. I cannot. And you like go out in the mountains. It's like half on the road. Like you'll take a road out, and then you'll be out way in the mountains somewhere, and then come back. It's just a. It's hard. Yeah. It's and you really have to hard. do it at a certain time limit. I mean, it's a field. Like, and they do group starts. Like, there's he's talking about categories. It's just yeah. like five thousand people start. And like some people are racing to finish, some people are doing it for the adventure, but like the fast, like the wow. front is racing it. Got so it. you're wow. racing the whole Got it. Got 200 it. miles, 150 miles, whatever it is. Crazy. And is it wrong to assume that you like pain and torture? <laughs> I, I mean, don't wanna, so like, <laughs> I don't want to say, I'm just asking. I think it's more miles. what she was talking about, about Mark, is I'm just super competitive. Ah, yeah. gotcha. Okay, okay. And I don't like getting beat. So That's I, what keeps you in it, right? It yeah. has to. So the first one was horrible. It was like the worst <laughs> pain. My legs are cramping, everything. My legs wow. are cramping. I'm yeah. not there. I'm yeah, I'm like dehydrated. It. And then what? it just makes me like more motivated and being like, I don't like getting beat at this. <laughs> I don't like like being the dude who's just struggling to finish and people are racing and like, how do they do that? And it like motivated me to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So I don't- It's a different mentality. It is. And there is a way to do it. Like it's now it's not like, pain i mean there's hard sections but you learn yeah. how to pace it and it's not just straight because your body and becomes accustomed the whole time. to yeah. it it's, it's a lot of work it's, it's a, a lot, lot of work. work yeah it's a lot of work yeah. yeah wow behind the scenes to go do it but yeah, a lot of training yeah right? but for me it's not even that's the racing side and then for me it's not even so much racing there's like this whole thing in our cycling industry and i don't think anyone knows how to really classify it because not everyone like you guys said mm -hmm. wants to go do a 200 mile 150 mile race he said 200 it was 100 before <laughs> no, and, uh, it like just minimum, keeps going. Going. minimum, oh it's minimum 100 <laughs> i wish they were all 100 because i don't like doing yeah. it <laughs> oh my god uh, 
but then there's like this adventure side of it. And then my side, I live in the city. I stay in downtown LA Mm -hmm. and I can ride my gravel bike and like jump off on all the bike paths and like go down (laughs) into the river and jump back up and do all this stuff. And my way or like my lane in the sport has kind of been the video project side that I learned through BMX and all that. Mm. And that's kind of how I made a name for myself as I was doing these videos and things like that. And people started mm-hmm. seeing me and then also the races and they're like, oh, and he can, ra- he's not just doing the videos and he can race and do this too. So mm. I'm kind of in my own lane, yeah, like honestly. Own lane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. One man show. Okay, okay. So you got that creative. You can't yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, so, but how did you? How did you get into that? Is that like? Did that start with like you racing? I'm like I'm, I'm, making, I'm making up a whole story about you right now. <laughs> but then did you start out <laughs> racing with like the camera in front of your your fucking like helmet? Did no. you guys? You guys wear helmets? <laughs> uh, no, we wear helmets. Yeah, okay, is it like that? Them. Is that how you got started, or were you actually filming other people racing? No. Well, it was an easy transition for me because. BMX riding, I was a street rider, so we're out in the streets filming video parts, oh, you know, it, shooting it, photos it. and magazines and stuff. I was a pro for like 10 years doing got that. It. And I tore my oh. knee really bad. Oh. I was off for like two years and kind of like being like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I went into like, I just started working in film because I knew that from again, BMX, we've been filming each other forever. So mm. it was an easy transition to pop into commercials. And I had some contacts through sponsors and stuff like that. Nice. So, uh, but anyway, I was missing that competitive side, the Mm. athlete part. And I was kind of off for two years and I was really like at a crossroads. I was like, I'm not, I'm like 30 years old. I'm not old yet. I still got time in me, but Mm -hmm. I've traveled the whole world for BMX. I've been all China, Middle East, like all over Europe, everywhere. Wow. So there's nothing really new for me in that. And I tore my knee, rehabbed it, tore it again. Oh my God. So then I was kind of like, I'm done. Look at me like touching my my, knee. Yeah. (laughs) I was really, I was finished with that. Uh, Not finished, but there's just nothing like, what am I going to do? Relearn the old tricks that I used to do for like the 10th time. Yeah. (laughs) And And then break your knee again. Yeah. yeah, And try to like travel somewhere I've been and film the same video. Like, I've done it. So this is like a new challenge for you. Exactly. Yeah. So then I knew bikes so well. And then when I came into this, like I said, I'm getting beat by all these dudes where I'm like, hold on. It's like, like really hold on. It's like really going on here. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and everyone's like being like, whatever. I'm like, you guys don't know who I am. Yeah, yeah. we just talked about that. Yeah. 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 We just so, talked about that. Wow. Um, so is it um so on the gravel side, because you do road racing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's te- the technical. Technically, term. yeah. Yeah. And then so now with the gravel, is it just as white dominant as like road racing is? Very much so. Maybe mm. worse. Really? Really? What are you guys' reaction? When I, I say know. It? Like, I, like, I don't even know why I do that, really. I'm just like, mm, well. <laughs> yeah. On that note, I feel like maybe you guys kind of paved the way, like hearing you talk. Because, mm. you know, there's people like him and Justin and all all these different black people who are now doing it even in the tour there's no americans yet but mm-hmm. <laughs> some yeah. black europeans yeah. that i can see now and i'm like well they did it yeah mm-hmm. so it inspires people yeah maybe it makes it like where it's not as like crazy because at the time right. you're talking about oh, there was man. no one there yet yeah there's no one there yeah. yet and uh, i had to travel i mean we ha- like they traveled to wisconsin from la mm. it's yeah. in and tour of america's daily it's such a big race it's an 11 day stage race what? Um, so every oh, day you race for 11 days straight oh my God. and, uh, and that's a big enough race Next to bring level. in talent from the, across the country. And that was literally the only time I saw mm. what, three other people. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Out crazy. of. In the field of. Yeah, uh, no black well, the coolest though. part is like, uh, when I met Justin, we were, um, racing on great America's road Ray. It's a, it's a race course for, for vehicle, for cars. Um, and then we got, we both got dropped out of the road race. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, but we were like trying to get back and that's when I saw Justin. And at that time he was already a legend to like me cause he's, he's done, like he's, he's raced uh pro tour with Livestrong and all this other okay. stuff. Um, and I was like, oh my God, it's Justin Williams. So I was like, I met him. I was like, Hey man, like let's get back, blah, blah, blah. So we looked back and we did see, uh, um, the Mexican national team had their team there. Mm. Uh, like, you know, the, their Olympic team. Well, that was my example of saying that we saw other brown people, mm. right? Yeah. You know, the Mexicans, they were there, the um, Venice, Venezuela. But it takes that b- big race to actually mm-hmm. bring those people in so you can see other people that don't look. And maybe 
Mm-hmm. Do you think it was harder for you because you were like in your twenties, like trying to prove yourself? I'm yeah. like when I got into this, I'm thirty years old. Yeah, so you're if there's already... like some racist white dude, I'm like, it's like whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who cares? Yeah, because like I'll your... go hang out with my friends. Yeah, exactly. you guys I'm yeah. Even really kick it with you guys. Because in your twenties, so. you're still kind of yeah, learning yeah. your own it's confidence. So. You're growing into yourself, and yeah. I didn't have that circle. Yeah, exactly. like I didn't oh, have yeah, like I wasn't in L.A. <clears throat> exactly. That's what I was gonna say. And I was in Indiana. Like it's so easy for me to pop. Like, yeah. not in my cycling group. Because we were the dudes that, like, made fun of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is, like, <laughs> this, is the cool, this is the coolest part, and I'm glad that he's here. Because, like, <laughs> there's there's cycling subcultures. Okay. <laughs> like, and, like, they would make fun of us because we're, like, wearing these tight ass, like. Wait, who? Like, the bro. BMXers? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah, they would make fun of like, all those guys. guys. So, so quick, quick, quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. BMXers, what is the difference between the BMXers versus what you were doing? Well, we are like the- cyclists. They're like athletes. Or I say they, I'm trying to do it. Like <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you're an athlete out there. <laughs> I'm, still, yeah. I'm still hating. Because BMX is more like tricks. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's, ah, it's changed okay, a little okay. bit okay. now with the X Games and stuff. But yes. Back, I sound so old, but when I was doing it, it was like. It's really like an underground thing, you know, like yeah. skateboarding is like how they have the like. Have you seen those old skate that. videos like, with you know, like the, like, oh yeah, the fish islands yeah. and stuff like that. And oh, like yeah. a lot of like hood black people do BMX. Like, yeah. That's yeah. My group that I ran yep. with was like got all you, got like you. different. Because it's like very much places, like walks stylish life. almost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's exactly. almost like dance. Like you have your own style. Yeah. yeah. You do a lot and of it's, tricks. Yeah. Very like personality yeah. based. Like even being a pro Got street you. rider. Got it's you. less so about it's like how and good you, do you hills, are. Yeah. Like the little jumps and yeah, the, and the hills and stuff. And we, still <laughs> look, and we still look like goobers. Like yeah. we're, and we're trying to change that <laughs> now. Yeah. It's 2022. So we're still trying to change that. But it's like back, you know, back when he was riding, like we still like ridiculous. When I first switched, I didn't even like. I didn't put it on my Instagram. No, I didn't no. tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Because I was Not like, I'm just going to get made fun of like, by oh all my, my friends. That they're like, oh, yeah. you're wearing these tight clothes doing this stuff Yeah, now? so I wanted to actually talk about that because yeah. Yeah. I had I told you yesterday that, um, and I think you were there too, mm-hmm. that uh, when I w- was living in Oakland and I was working at a hair salon, um, the first time you came to visit me there, I think it was just like randomly. Please he was tell just me he didn't ride his, his bike, bike into oh, the yeah. thing. In the just randomly riding <laughs> his bike through Oakland. See, cyclist, this is why. Yes. <laughs> this and is so why we can't just, overcome, like, Mark. Yeah, he just happened to pop up at the <laughs> hair salon. Too. And this is Oakland, you know, uh, everybody except one of the hairstylists was black yeah, or brown. Yeah. And um, he leaves. It was just a really quick hello. He leaves and everyone's like, um, Eliana, what is he wearing? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I was in shape. I felt good. You know, they, nobody they else knows that they except for so other surprised. cyclists. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah now, and maybe. also yeah, because maybe. they had never seen really a black cyclist. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they were yeah, just yeah. very confused. Like yeah. what is happening right now? So talk a little bit about that. Was that a hurdle when you first started? Uh, yeah. Actually. Yeah. And I was like, man, this shit look cool. And I was like, damn. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. I was like, this shit look trash. I was like, I was trying to figure out like, okay, how can I look dry? the way i want to dress and look real like so you guys cared back then too yeah yeah for sure and i was like damn all this stuff was whack you know i was like trying to figure like okay uh these ankle socks ain't doing it so i was like we're gonna run tall socks even back then yeah um and i was like man everyone looked ridiculous so i was Mm -hmm. trying my best to like look as cool as possible what what, what we had um and we had to wear a team kit and stuff like that so you can't wear what you're you know you can't wear anything other than your sponsor because like uh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're paying for everything you can't yes. brand it up because yeah. you yeah, have to brand their brand you have to write like their a nerdy yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Andrew, Andrew has his canyon hat yeah. on right now but that actually looks cool so <laughs> yeah that's uh, nice that's really cool, yeah. but like the you know back in the day it was not it was, it was cool. not yeah um but uh I cared a lot about and I, I was actually pretty known for like looking good on the bike to other cyclists mm-hmm. but we're trying to make it to the point where we look good in general mm-hmm. and then we're trying to do that with certain ways and and uh you know with, so this with is what concept. i mean when i say you paved the way mm-hmm. because then i get to come in like when i started i already got to see mm-hmm. you like people yeah. like you justin rafa and stuff like it's cool there is people like yeah, that are, people are making this look cool, cool to yeah. like right. not just cyclists yep. did you yeah. get pushback on that from like your peers, your non-black peers? Uh, not uh, no, not really. Okay, they were like, "Damn, you look like like." That that's I was gonna say, fly, bro. Like, yeah, like, oh I was like, "Damn, would you, you know, you know?" Because when I thought when you said that, the first thing that I thought about was tennis. 
because mm. I was, <laughs> I did because I was thinking about first of all it's a very white dominated yeah. sport it was for a long time you had these couple black chicks come through right. everybody's like exactly. oh my god and they come wear, with like, beads a white polo but, yes it, you know. it's so traditional it's yeah. so Caucasian right yes. and and now you have these black girls coming through they from Compton they coming through they got beads <laughs> all these noises like you know you know how black folks do you know what i'm saying we coming in we extra yeah. weird. fast yes. forward serena's coming through with a cat suit on people are like what is she wearing yeah. she's, just, she's trying to destroy this sport. it's crazy if that makes people mad though huh? Yo, yeah. of course, of mad, course. Mad. but you know what it is more than so anything stupid. it's the it's the making it your own mm -hmm. thing it's like nah this was here before you it's a legacy sport it's a rich people sport yeah, and yeah. then you kind of come in and you put your little spin on it and people didn't like that so i'm i'm well, glad that what, you didn't get the pushback no yeah. no I didn't, it, it, people thought it was cool because you know i i didn't make a ton of money and i kind of sold up but I, I didn't make a ton of money back then so i had to like you know try to figure out like how can i look the like the way I want to look yeah. with least amount of money because it's expensive. It's crazy well, expensive. Yeah. Wow. One thing on that though, because now I have sponsors and all this, I remember the first like times because I already had started telling like I was shooting in like these like areas in the city where I'd ride my BMX bike and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, like trash and it's street, like, you know, warehouses, yeah. graffiti, like it looks cool. Mm -hmm. right. To me, like I see it and I'm like, this is real street, like Again, the same thing I was talking about. You guys can't shoot here because you'll probably get robbed or yeah. something will happen yeah, to you. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember the first time I brought a sponsor, or it wasn't the sponsor, it was a photographer that they sent down to shoot me. He was like, we can't shoot here. Hmm. And I was like kind of confused. And I was like, yeah. what do you mean? That's wild. And he's like, we can't shoot here. Like, it's too dirty. He's like, they're never going to go for this. And I'm like... I yeah. wrote, I'm it's like wild. a couple blocks from my house, this is my neighborhood. Yeah, because <laughs> like the traditional look for cycling right. was like buttoned up, up in the mountains. Yeah. Yes. Like Vista in the He's changing it. We're changing that. Yeah. It's actually and, like, it's so cool, actually. Uh, yeah. I love that. It is funny, like as yeah. he's saying now, now I look and every shoot now is it's in where urban. this happened in like two years. Two and there's years. a whole thing called urban gravel now yeah, that people tell me and I'm like oh, no. you mean Yo, urban, put urban gravel just, like, just, like, yeah. just me riding just out of my house yeah, like, exactly. that's, that's I'm just urban. going home urban no gravel. big deal like, they just always gotta throw the urban yeah. in there and then they like bring these people in like from who knows where mm. that don't know where they're at and then right. want to shoot it and i'm like this is the corniest thing i've ever but that's seen. why you should be doing it exactly. that's why it should be you shooting the shit yeah you yeah. should be the one putting the production together you I should think, be one at the helm yeah. of that well i mean luckily i've been doing it for a minute in bmx Good. so i made sure that i had all the sponsors lined up i had yeah. all my deals lined up before this blew up so right. that i wasn't in the position where everybody Exactly. I say everybody, you guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in and steals what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Word, yo. Word. Yeah. I, have, Not, I have to ask you this thing, though, because I always, when I talk to athletes, I have to ask. So you know, there is a timeline Mm -hmm. So before you know your knees may be like, listen, bro, I want you to uh, stop. You so just, not yeah. that's not anytime soon, though. Okay, we ain't rushing. <laughs> Damn. But <laughs> but in terms of the cycling culture, though, do you see yourself <laughs> participating? I know you found a great angle in being able to capture as a cinematographer and a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. But for for you in general, do you find that there's a place to go next? Is it a place to stay within the cycling community, but be able to parlay it into another other, another aspect? Well, well, my story. Well, the thing that makes and we talked about this in our podcast too with Justin and I. So Justin's a professional athlete. Like yeah. he's a Red Bull sponsor athlete. He's been, he raced in every level of the sport, um, highest level of the sport. I stopped at a certain point and it couldn't go like pro pro. Okay. So I went professional in an other way in terms of the cycling industry. So I became mm. an industry professional and a marketer and, and, and my job is to make everything look cool. So mm. um, that's what I did. So we talk about that <clears throat> kind of dynamic. Got it. Um, that there's other avenues to go professional within the cycling industry. I think you had something to do with my first sponsor, right? There you go, I think right? so. Didn't you? Yeah. Oh. yeah, Rafa? Yep, yep, yeah. Mm. yep. So <laughs> trying to, yeah, actually I did. Yeah. So you're yep. creating opportunities for Yeah, I people. give, I'm, I try to give, and we just talked about this outside too with uh, one of our, one of the newest guys that we met. Um, and uh, I just, you know, if I see someone that is putting in the work and that wants to do this and is passionate about it, I'm gonna do everything I can to put those people in the right places yeah. uh, and uh, that's what i did for justin for, that's dope yeah that's dope. That's the solidarity like, want, is necessary yeah, yeah and we need that and uh we talk about it all the time in in our group and um 
and uh, that we try to do something together and it's unified and, um, you know, anything that we want to push out in terms of trends or whatever have you, uh, you know, kind of have like a little meeting about it and just make sure that it's, it's actually, uh, you know, within the culture mm -hmm. makes sense. Shit mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and you, so there is a team called Legion, which is probably the only team that I know that has like a really diverse. Well, that's, group that's of another cyclists. thing. What you just said is kind of profound that, you know, yeah. So Legion, Legion of Los Angeles is, uh, the only, um, black owned and, um, operated professional team right now. Okay. And um, the fact that a lot of people that are cycling adjacent or not even don't even know about cycling are starting to learn about these guys mm -hmm. is uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's yeah. Dope. Um, that's dope. Normalize people of color Correct. being on bikes. On yeah, bikes. I think, yeah, I think we definitely, I want to see that. How yeah. do you think that if somebody wanted to get into it right now and we're talking about like this threshold? around finances about getting and getting into the sport. How would people be able to get in if they can't just like get a sponsor? Are they just right. trying to get a bike? Is there yeah. anything that they can do? Well, probably the way that I got into it, which is a, a a track bike or what they call a fixie these days. It's like 300 bucks. Okay, okay. And uh, you can actually, uh, a track bike will take you a long, a long way in my opinion. Cause uh, that's, I started on that. Then I started racing velodrome on this like street track bike that's like, <laughs> put together with like whatever parts I could find <laughs> and start racing the velodrome started getting really good at it and they're like hey you're really good at this here's a road bike you know and then they hooked me up with a road bike and I was like okay I, got I feel like this. you did it the very traditional way though mm -hmm. and um, I feel yeah, like kind of I mean I like started but I was right like way. <laughs> but I feel like whenever I hear this question I feel like the price may not e or not might I don't this is my theory you could take <laughs> take it what you think I don't necessarily believe that the price is what's keeping black people out of it. Mm. Okay. Like okay. if you go to the hood, people spend money. Oh, like, no, that's so like, true. <laughs> black people spend money. That's true. Like, I agree. I, mean, I actually agree. That's very true. Yeah. That's but, not but, the but, issue. But a bike seems like a thing. luxury though. Yeah, they spend so, it on other hold things. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. I'm getting to it. Okay, <laughs> right, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. You make it cool, mm -hmm. like something dope, like give people something to look at and be like, I want to do that. That's right. cool. Yeah. People will spend the money and go buy a bike and get it. Like it's not that... Like I'm not gonna spend ten grand on a bike to like we have be in spandex car. and look like a yeah. nerd riding yeah. around in a circle. But if it's dope, like okay, yeah. I'll spend five grand. So you think like, that's where the magic is? I think it that look there's dope. not enough in cycling the, the that makes aesthetic. it cool, like yeah. to black people. Like since we're talking about black people, the black people in the hood or wherever. Like I don't even want to say in the hood, in the city or urban <laughs> areas. <laughs> like because I mean, I'm uh, telling me I could care less about a bike. Yeah. Until I got into it. And I rode for, I have my little brother, he is actually a pro mountain biker. Yeah, his little brother. He got me a bike. Yeah. When I told you I was hurt, he just gave me his road bike. And mm -hmm. I rode it for two years. I'm like, I'm not buying one of those. I don't want it. <laughs> but after two years, I kind of started to learn the sport. I was like, oh, this is dope. I went to Rafa yeah, went with to you Rafa. guys and yeah. saw yeah. some cooler people. And I was like, oh, it's cool. I went and spent five grand on a bike. Jeez. Like mm. no big, like it wasn't. Yeah, an and issue. we are in LA, <laughs> and the bike culture here traditionally yeah. is like you know the really hooked up bikes. It's yeah. a very oh, specific yeah, type yeah, of yeah. style, right? Mm -hmm. But people spend a lot of money yeah, on those bikes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we make it cool. Yeah, yeah. and uh, actually, it's funny because one of my my work trips in uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, I, uh, <laughs> I was there. Lord have mercy. Yeah, exactly. Arkansas. I met a uh, shout out to Black Watts, uh, but I met these uh, these uh, these dope dudes from. Uh, jersey um and uh they have the similar like you know always oh, saw you doing this crazy stuff and like you know uh then we wanted to wear cycling lycra spandex whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and uh, that's we're seeing that effect and uh and a lot of our group was talking about like we're not we're, we're doing this now but we're probably not going to see the effect in terms of um high level black athletes black and brown athletes uh, in about maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, because yeah. of the way cycling works. Um, but uh, but yeah, actually, so when I got started, <laughs> I was doing track bike stuff and uh, we were going around doing uh, these things called alley cats in yeah, different cities. Those. Yeah, and like 15 yeah. passengers. What's that? 
So an alicat is an unsanctioned race where you have checkpoints and you just run <laughs> around. Unsanctioned like, meaning it's just regular. Yeah, folk. you're just in live <laughs> traffic and yeah. underground, yeah. underground yeah. shit. It's, okay, yeah. so, okay. Um, so I, I, which I thought was cool as a BMX. Yeah, I so I actually, so, yeah, so I did. You seem like, like you'd be into that and, shit. Yeah, yeah, and we weren't like, wearing, right we weren't wearing spandex, yeah. and I was, I was actually with him. I was actually again, I was like, yeah, you wear regular clothes. Yeah, I was wearing. Oh, okay. And so I didn't have the most traditional way, but. But I did have a streamline way. Uh, mm. What he's talking about? But I was. I like, don't mean traditional in that sense, like meaning that yeah. you oh, had yeah, to yeah. get into bikes or get like Got you it, yeah. had to get a bike, yep, get, get a bike. good at it on mm. your own, figure it out yourself. Like mm -hmm. you didn't. Like I said, you didn't have. I got into it, and then I was like, "Oh, these dudes are doing it." I'll Got it. Doing <laughs> yeah. Got you. So it was Got like you. it was weird because um, uh, we you know I started on just riding the street, like riding on the street and doing these like weird track bike tricks and shit and. Um, and then that's how I basically got into cycling. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I definitely get what you're talking about. Um, now, oh, mm -hmm. before you go, mm -hmm. I do have a story. So, <laughs> <laughs> so w we met in Indiana. So he was like fully into the bike culture and everything like that. And so, you know, this is around the time we were just dating and I mm. think we w were either moving in together or had just moved in together and uh he got me a bike oh shit. i think it was my friend's bike alicia's bike alicia's bike yeah yeah so he got me a bike and he's trying to like get me into the bike thing and uh <laughs> and i freaking hated it and there was one day where <laughs> i he was working at a hotel i think i was also working at a different hotel in the same area so we were heading home from the hotel and it starts raining and he's like, come on, let's go. Like, you're good. You're good. You're good. And I literally, shit, you know, I could not see anything. My eyelashes were all up. It's and my mascara was running. Yeah, I don't even know. And it's rain. like, I was cold. This I sounds was like, dangerous as sucks. fuck. <laughs> and then cut to, I was like, I'm never doing this again. And then cut to wintertime hits. And this man is running, or not running, riding his bike in ice. Yeah, it's fun. Like yeah. nothing. Yeah. See, he didn't make you go do <laughs> no, that. This is going to be a barrier for black folks. I can tell you and that right now. Yeah, that's for real. I don't, and I no. said, this black is a different like, mentality. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is super fun. It's, I in was, the ice? I, I don't see in the, the ice, Did yeah. you just send a photo of you riding in the snow yeah, recently? The and the I told snow, you yeah. absolutely not. He's like, absolutely not. I was like, hey, guys, this is great. And you and said a little. Chat, oh, you said absolutely not? No, yeah, you said absolutely not. The whole group chat was like, man, were you tripping? I was like, I'm not tripping. And you said, it's a yeah, it's just a little chilly. It's a little chilly. It's just a little little chilly and meanwhile it's like negative 10 degrees outside there's Whoa. ice on the ground and he's just like Shoop. i mean, I mean you love that shit that's why i appreciate it, it was yeah. actually pretty fun it was like a challenge to me but also, okay. but also like the uh <laughs> like racing <laughs> andrew love but oh, racing in the God. rain is also like pretty challenging too and mm -hmm. uh, uh i mean if you ask one of uh, our friend like justin he loves racing in the rain and it's oh, like a, a another it's actually a special skill in my opinion because that shit is like yeah, yeah, I, I can barely hard. walk in the rain bro it, I, like, I have to have <laughs> yeah, on the hard. right sneakers so I can't even yeah. try like going 30 miles like 20 30 miles an hour leaning into a corner in oh the rain no on no the your really tires skinny tire. I would die yeah. uh, duh, duh. Yeah. So, listen I have another question because we have like five minutes <laughs> left I oh wow I, have, okay, I know pew um <laughs> Media. I was like, I have to ask you about media yeah. because we were just talking about like how there's like a 10, 15 year kind of like, you know, pathway to get in black what we folks. Think, yeah. What about media? Is like, have, has black media picked up or brown media picked up cycling? Have they picked up y'all? Have they featured you? I'm just interested to see how, because we know through media, that's how you can also push you something. You mean around. outside or in cycling media? I mean outside media. I'm just yeah. talking about like a, mm. like a like a BET or like a, you know, just no. like a... Oh, I think we're a ways off. I think we're a ways <laughs> really? off. Really? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I grew up in motorcycles and mm. that was James Stewart. I don't know if you know who that is, the first mm. black dude. He won every, he's like the Michael Jordan of motor oh, cross shit. racing, motor dirt bikes. Wow. Mm. And now 10, 15 years later, you got the dudes wheeling down the street on dirt bikes. On dirt bikes. Yeah. And that all started with him. Like when I came up, it's really similar to your experience. No black people were on a dirt bike. No black people wanted to touch a dirt bike. Wow. But after him, it came. So, mm -hmm. but I don't know if me to answer your question. So you think it's a ways off? I think it's like, a ways off. Actually, we're literally, we're just, great. but yeah. we're just start, we're literally, we're just starting to get 
like white owned outsides of cycling media. Mm. We're just starting. So it's, I think it's going to be a ways out. Or, I mean, sh- if anyone's listening to this and want to holler at us. Right? <laughs> BET no, for sure. executives. For sure. Like, I think it's, it's, it is compelling. It's coming. And, uh, it's coming. And we, you know, and, uh, and knowing, knowing the guys in our group, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff cook, being cooked up and shopped. So yeah. there's, there's definitely avenues and things that we're, we're trying to accomplish mm-hmm. that'll get cycling and, and from what we're trying to convey. Um, out there to people that are curious about it or at least yeah you know want to know more about it or maybe it's like oh i'm not i don't even know anything about cycling but this looks actually actually really cool Mm -hmm. yeah because the thing is is like like i said just like with tennis just like with golf other sports when black folks do get in that shit yeah we will rip and tear that shit up to shreds that's what that's what the that's what fuck it up Corey and justin that's what's happening right now so i would love to i mean this sounds like a little bit of a documentary to me i think that it's really that's what i I was just thinking yeah i think that it's fascinating if we could get our hands on you know right (laughs) cut this part out listen but that's so true because when i before i met you the only cyclist i knew was lance armstrong yeah because he was everywhere he was on on his Yo, media the, the funniest yeah, shit is like everything. the funniest shit is like riding when I used to ride in Indiana on the back country be like what's up Lance hey Lance I was like bro I'm black like Lance is not black <laughs> Like, do you know any other cyclists? That's what we just, that's what we need. We need, I really do think that that's a really interesting thing. But Lance lane. had a personality, though. Lance, Lance did have a personality. Up. That's true. Because he's and like scandal. a hard ass dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, and just, a little bit of scandal ooh, in there, too. Batman. I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole other thing. Whole, that's a whole other thing. We can't touch that on this I episode because we're about to wrap. But it's so true because, like, that. I remember seeing, like, a mini documentary by CBS or whoever the hell it was. And I was like, oh, cycling is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great to literally just feature black and brown folks in exactly. the sport and talk about like, why aren't a lot of black and brown people doing it? Oh, no, there are black and brown yeah, people yeah, doing it. Yes. Look at what so, they're doing. Look how successful they we, are. Absolutely. That's yeah, but we, uh, I would watch that. But yeah. we put together some framework on how to achieve this. And, uh, you know, and it's great because we, I mean, we are just starting to talk to this guy more starting to talk to our friends more about this this framework and trying to figure out like, hey, what are the steps that we need to do to take cycling to a broader audience mm. um, and get it to the forefront? Because that's our mission. Like we, Justin and I aligned on the same mission, trying to get people that, um, that look like us that didn't have the support, as much support as they can because Period. we didn't have it. Uh, when, yeah. we, when we started uh, yeah. we didn't even have the emotional support system to even talk about this shit right yeah. um so we're we're trying our best to do it and we want to see it succeed um it will. and uh yeah so well speaking of support how do people follow you where do they follow uh, you you can follow me on instagram at mark allen offered it's my entire name hilarious <laughs> uh, mark allen as a branding yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> spell it for the people mark allen uh m-a-r-k-a-l-l-e-n-a-l-f-o-r-d um, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, we are going to be uh, shooting more of our podcasts from the gun, so you can find that on iTunes um, and soon to be on YouTube. Um, and that's where you can find me at. Boom, bang. Yeah. Andrew, where can people find my you? Same, just my name, Andrew Jackson, with the underscore on Instagram. Uh, I don't have all this guy's stuff going no, on. <laughs> He's like, I'm just too nah, fly to do all this shit. You can catch like... him on just like, YouTube this guy. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, that's the old BMX stuff. It's the old BMX yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, check it out. If you're curious about BMX, yeah, check it out. Yes, yeah, that's a good yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if you're curious about track bike cycling or anything, Google I mean, Google or YouTube me too. I'm on there. Okay, we dope. Do, that you could be like, oh, that's what street. If you Google yeah. track yeah, bikes, you'll come up. Yeah. Track and we'll bikes. link it. We'll link, we'll link to all of those yeah, things yeah, yeah. so people track can bikes, check it out. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish we could have this conversation for longer, but yeah. this was a dope conversation. I feel more enlightened. I'm over here. Let me know if you're trying to pitch this documentary. I know a couple hey, people we, that could maybe help. But I think that is dope. So I just want to say thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Andrew, for bringing all of your knowledge. We love talking sports. Yo, we got to do this with other folks. This is we pretty do. dope. Yeah. Um, the black cycling and the brown cycling space. Like, let's explain expand this conversation so thank y'all for joining us Ileana I'll let you close out yeah no thank y'all for being here this is great we definitely want to um you know just kind of promote people of color doing the things we do yeah like not normalizing the fact that we can and will be great at whatever it is that we want to do it's just getting over the hurdles that consistently try to bring us down so I am so proud of you and all of the things guy because like, yeah. he's literally That's i think he's literally the first one you see how he gravel. just skirted around that compliment though yeah. yeah okay listen i am so proud of you and you. congratulations on getting You're into this new yeah. challenge we're proud of you too we are proud of you too <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> 
<laughs> but yes, keep going, no, keep doing what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. And hopefully more people will start picking it up and joining and you won't yep. be the only people. <laughs> the only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Soon it'll yeah. be like a whole thing. So. Yeah. 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 So That's boom. It. So make sure you follow us at the Stranger Fruit yeah. on Instagram and TikTok. Fuck Twitter. We love y'all. <laughs> Stay safe and take it easy. Peace. Peace. Bye.